So for the last three weeks, we've been factoring these quadratic equations. There was a reason that we've learned how to factor them, and that is to be able to solve a quadratic equation, such as these problems here. So if you see a quadratic equation, and just let me just define what it means to be quadratic. It means that the biggest exponent in the problem is a 2. So in this problem it says y equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. If I want to solve this, here are the steps. First, you remove that y and just make it equal to 0. Okay, set one side of the equation equal to 0. And if it's, if it's given to you as y equals, then just make this equal 0. And then if you look on the right side here, that is a 1 a.m. trinomial that we have been factoring. So if I factor that, I need two numbers that multiply to be negative 10 that add up to be positive 3, which will be positive 5 and negative 2. And now I have that side factored, which is what we've been learning how to do. But we're not trying to just factor this equation. We're trying to solve this for x. So here's how you solve it. Once you have one side factored and the other side equal to 0, then you take each of your factors, each sets of parentheses, so this is the one parentheses, x plus 5, and you simply set it equal to 0, and you create what I call a little baby equation. And you do the other one as well, x minus 2. You set that equal to 0 and create that little baby equation. And then you solve each one of these uh, equations for x, and that will give you your solutions. So when you take away 5 from both sides here, which remember you're trying to get x by itself, you get x equals negative 5. Over here, x minus 2 equals 0. I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get rid of that. Solving that equation, I get x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. There are two solutions to this equation. So the basic rule is one side has to be equal 0. Factor the other side. And then take what your parentheses are, your factors, and set them equal to 0. So in this equation, it's already equal to 0. So I'm going to factor this. This is a 1 a.m. trinomial, so these should be easier. I need numbers that multiply to give you 3 that add up to be 4. Those would be 3 and 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Take each factor and set it equal to 0. Solve those two baby equations, and you got your two solutions. So to get x by itself here, I would take away 3 from both sides of the equal sign, and I've got x equals negative 3. Take away 1 from both sides on this equation, and you get x equals negative 1. So there's your two solutions. Okay, Let's look at a little harder one. This one tends to give students trouble. It's equal to 0. This is a 1 a.m. trinomial, so I'm going to split the x's. Numbers that multiply to give you negative 20 that add up to be negative 1 would be negative 5 and positive 4. Those multiply to give you negative 20 and they add up to be negative 1. Now, some students are going to be tempted to stop here, but in this one, we are factoring, but we're not just factoring. We're trying to solve this equation for x. So you take each of your factor, each of your factors, and set them equal to 0 and make these little baby equations. x minus 5 equals 0, and then the other side. x plus 4 equals 0, and then you solve both of these. Well, I can get rid of that minus 5 by adding 5 to both sides. So I get x equals 5. I get rid of this plus 4 by minusing 4 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 4. All right, so that's not as hard as it gets because if you notice all of these equations, they all equal 0, equal 0, equal 0, equal 0, equal 0. Okay, but now what happens if you get down to a problem like 17 where it doesn't equal 0? Okay, now let me just reiterate. This is quadratic because of the x to the second power. 
So we cannot solve these equations like we do a regular equation. We have to find another method. And factoring is one method that you can use sometimes, uh, and it's easy if you know how to factor. But first, this side has to equal zero. One of your sides has to equal zero, and this doesn't, it equals 21. Well, I want to make it equal zero. <clears throat> I need to make this side equal zero. Well, how would I make that side equal zero? I'm just going to take away 21. 21 take away 21 is zero. But if I take away 21 from this side of the equal sign, I have to take away 21 from the other side of the equal sign <clears throat> to its like term. Problem is, there is no like term over here. So this minus 21 that I'm going to try to do over here, I can't combine it with this, and I can't combine it with this. I'm just going to tack it on at the end and make it look like that. And now it's a 1 a.m. trinomial that I can factor, and this side is equal to 0. So I'm going to break this apart. <clears throat> Numbers that multiply to give you negative 21 and add up to be positive 4 would be 7 and negative 3. Don't stop here. For this problem, we're trying to solve it. Take each factor, x plus 7, set that equal to 0. Take the other one, x minus 3, set that equal to 0. When you take away 7 from both sides, you get negative 7. When you add 3 to both sides, you get 3. Okay? So that's, when, you, when one side doesn't equal 0, you have to make it equal 0. So for this problem, 18, I would minus 4x, and I can't minus 4x from either one of these, so I'm just going to stick it in the middle where it goes so that it's in standard form. So I minus 4x from this side, and I minus 4x here, but I placed it right in the middle so it's in standard form, and now I can factor that and solve it. Okay, so I'll let you guys go ahead and factor that and solve it. <clears throat> if I look at 20, number 20, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Here's my equal sign. And I need this side equal to 0. So I'm going to minus 4x. But I do have a like term over here I can minus 4x from. So now I'm left with x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals, the 4x's are gone, equals 1. It still doesn't equal 0, so now I need a minus 1 from both sides from its like term, since it has a like term. So I get x squared minus 14x plus 48 equals 0, and now I can factor it. And the numbers that you would need would be 6 and 8, of course. Multiply to give you that. So let's look at just one more problem. 16x squared equals 9. I need this side equal to 0, so I'm going to minus 9. When I minus 9 over here, I don't have anything to subtract it from. So I'm just going to tack it on at the end and make it look like this, 16x squared minus 9. <clears throat> this is not a 1 a.m. trinomial. This side equals 0, so that's good, but this is not a 1 a.m. trinomial. This is the difference of two perfect squares. So I can factor these. Remember, the square root of 16x squared is 4x. The square root of 9 is 3. You make 1 a plus and 1 a minus. And now you set each of these factors equal to 0 and you solve it. So 4x plus 3 equals 0 and 4x minus 3 equals 0. And this one's going to be a little different because these are two-step equations. So I'm going to take away, remember I'm going to try to get x by itself. So I'm going to take away 3 from both sides first. And that leaves me with 4x equals negative 3. And then when I divide by 4, I can't divide that, so I'm just going to leave it. So x equals negative 3 fourths. That's one of my solutions. Over here, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And that's going to give me 4x equals positive 3. And then when I divide by 4, the 4s cancel, and I get x equals 3 fourths. So my two solutions are x equals 3 fourths and x equals negative 3 fourths. So now we're using all the factoring skills to solve these equations. And that's how you solve quadratic equations part one. Part two will be coming up on Wednesday.